Solomon. The story of Solomon is one of the more sorrowful stories in the Bible, and it is also one of the more disappointing stories. Solomon engaged in all of the Lord's activities specified in Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 16 through 17, as inappropriate for rulers. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 16 through 17, Amplified Bible. Further, he shall not acquire many war horses for himself, nor make the people return to Egypt in order to acquire horses to expand his military power, since the Lord said to you, You shall never return that way again. He shall never acquire multiple wives for himself, or else his heart will turn away from God, nor for the same reason shall he acquire great amounts of silver and gold. He amassed wealth in the form of Egyptian horses, silver, gold, and wives from other countries. This was the start of his ultimate downfall, and it was all because he fell right into the trap, compromising his faith in God, and following the wicked ways of the pagan nations he was associating with, despite the Lord's warning. 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 4 through 7, New American Standard Bible. As for you, if you walk before me as your father David walked, in integrity of heart and honesty, acting in accordance with everything that I have commanded you, and if you keep my statutes and my ordinances, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom over Israel forever, just as I promised to your father David, saying, You shall not be deprived of a man on the throne of Israel. But if you or your sons indeed turn away from following me, and do not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have placed before you, but you go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut Israel off from the land which I have given them, and the house which I have consecrated for my name, I will expel from my sight. So Israel will become a saying and an object of derision among all peoples. Solomon, as a result, lost God's blessing. Solomon may have been as young as 20 years old when he ascended to the throne. He was given an incredible opportunity. The final account of Solomon's life, however, is one of disappointment. 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 1 through 3, Amplified Bible. Now King Solomon defiantly loved many foreign women along with the daughter of Pharaoh, Moabite, Ammonite, Edomite, Sidonian, and Hittite women from the various nations of whom the Lord said to the Israelites, You shall not associate with them, nor shall they associate with you, for the result will be that they will turn away your hearts to follow their gods. Yet Solomon clung to these in love. He had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned his heart away from God. Solomon's polygamy was first a problem because it was contrary to God's initial plan of one man and one woman being united together. Second, marrying these women from neighboring nations was clearly forbidden, as God had warned that such women would turn the hearts of the Israelites away from following their gods. Solomon, unfortunately, ignored these facts hundreds of times. The extent to which Solomon disobeyed this crucial command is astounding. His wives converted him to idolatry exactly as predicted. 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 4 through 8, New American Standard Bible. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned his heart away to follow other gods. And his heart was not wholly devoted to the Lord his God, as the heart of his father David had been. For Solomon became a father of Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and of Milcom, the abhorrent idols of the Ammonites. So Solomon did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and did not follow the Lord fully, as his father David had done. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the abhorrent idol of Moab, on the mountain that is east of Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abhorrent idol of the sons of Ammon. He also did the same for all his foreign wives, who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. In terms of abstaining from idolatry, verse 4 indicates that King David's heart was entirely faithful to the Lord his God, but Solomon did not follow in his father's footsteps in this regard. He built idolatrous shrines in the Mount of Olives, east of Jerusalem. So the Lord said to Solomon, Since you have done this, and you have not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded you, I will certainly tear the kingdom away from you, and will give it to your servant. However, I will not do it in your days, only for the sake of your father David, but I will tear it away from the hand of your son. Yet I will not tear away all the kingdom, but I will give one tribe to your son for the sake of my servant David, and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. He now declared that, as a result of Solomon's idolatry, the kingdom would be taken from him and given to one of his servants. It would not, however, take place during Solomon's lifetime, and not all twelve tribes would be taken from the house of David. Solomon's son would receive one tribe. 1 Kings chapter 11, 
Then the Lord stirred up an adversary against Solomon, Hadad the Edomite. He was of royal descent in Edom. F. We know very little about Solomon's death. He left behind a son who was a bigger fool than he was, and a country that was deeply divided. We're curious if Solomon ever returned to the Lord. I believe he did. I believe we have Solomon's personal testimony in the book of Ecclesiastes. He came to the conclusion that the Lord is the true answer to experiencing joy in one's life. How did history's wisest man turn away from God? How could a leader whose talents and singular focus had previously made him the talk of the world deviate from his calling? The same temptations that Solomon faced are faced by every other leader today. When we arrive, it's easy to lose our desire for growth and greatness because we've met our objectives. How quickly we reach a state of contentment and how quickly we begin our downward spiral. Take note of how Solomon perceived the deterioration process. Distractions. He wandered from his call to lead and be a beacon to the nations. Adversaries. God rose up adversaries to guide him back to his priorities and call. Number three. He got preoccupied with himself rather than his calling, which is a sign of self-absorption. Number four. The absence of God's presence symbolized by the removal of his anointing. Number five. The pursuit of pleasure. As time went on, he grew even more preoccupied with his personal satisfaction. The vacuum was number six on the list, and it took him ultimately tiring of his aspirations to realize that he was empty. As that he was empty.